For the system setup, let's start by saving a custom preset, something that uh, many people do, and I do recommend it, although the settings on this system are generally very good. Save a custom preset is pretty simple. Uh, let's say you made some changes to the compression, the gain, um, you know, you turn off harmonics, turn the con, well, sorry, uh, turn off x res. And you want to save that because you like the way that is, and uh, there may be better penetration. Scroll that all the way down. You're going to do the same thing you did to select a preset. Hit the preset button, and over here it'll say Save Preset. So first you want to take this trackball and highlight the preset that you want to create, like based on whichever one. This isn't going to change the current one. It's just, you know, we've got this default here. Let's say I'm basing it on this adult echo and the changes I just made. It's going to remember all the changes I just made, and then I'm going to click Save Preset. And it's saying, do you want to modify the current or create new? This is a factory preset that I've chosen. So this modify current is not highlighted. It's grayed out, so I can't click on it, meaning I can't override the default preset on the system. So this is saying, okay, active exam, cardiac, active preset is adult echo, and the active preset name is adult echo. If I had a custom one there, I'd be able to modify it, but I cannot change a Phillips preset, so I would create new here, and I'll just type in uh, echo2, and click Save. So now when I hit that preset button, there it is right there, Echo 2. So if I want to get rid of that, I'm going to hit that preset button. I can hit Delete Preset right here to get rid of it. I can hit Save, and it's going to say, are you going to uh, delete or save, depending on what I pressed. I'm going to keep it right now. I'm going to hover over that and then hit Save Preset, and do I want to modify the current or create new? Uh, that's basically if you had made changes while you made that and said, you know what, I like the frequency a little bit better this way or that, then you can um, modify the, your custom preset. So <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and delete that and click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of that too. And let's go ahead and get into the system setups. Now the CX-50... It would start here on this system. If you had changed the measurement and calcs uh, like we did earlier, it's going to pop up to that screen. So go back to system and choose that system tab and we'll go across the bottom and then the top from there. Um, this is a fairly complex system to set up. Uh, so might be a good idea to go through all this just to know how powerful this system is. And what it does well is it explains many of the features on there saying, okay, if this goes wrong, you can do this. And it actually explains what it is instead of just giving you random stuff, which is uh, pretty common. But a lot of these things I will uh, skim over in order to make it a little shorter. You can experiment with them on your own. Uh, LGC profile display, that's these LGCs here. Thermal index, depth markers, you want them on the left and right. Monitor brightness, uh, I showed you how to do that with control M, but honestly it's just easier to do it from here. Monitor tint, uh, that was also a sh shortcut key. Control T uh, to, to go through the various uh, system tints. If you can see I hit control T here. It is scrolling through there. You can't really tell from there. Panel brightness, that's here. That was also control B, and that changed those items. Auto freeze, uh, you want it to go off or after five minutes of nothing. You have your automatic brightness control down here, external monitor if you've got one connected through VGA out here. TGC profile display, that's when you have the TGC lines. You want it just to show up for a short period of time or for the entire exam and English or metric, and that's uh, pretty straightforward. Now, we have all these tabs across the top, all the tabs along here, and yet another set of buttons along here. Uh, border and prompts, a lot of these are uh, pretty self-explanatory, what you want to see on the screen. Date and time, you set your date and time here. Uh, again, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you hit your time zone and your date, the locale. Um, this is basically how you want like your currency, your time, how you want that shown on the screen, languages, etc. DICOM, we will get to this in a separate movie. This is something that's uh, 
fairly complicated. And if you, it's not something that you're going to do, you won't care. So we'll just go ahead and skip that for now. And we'll get to that in a separate movie. Name format, how do you want it to show up on the screen? And you can see all these various items here to change. Nobody I know changes it. Security, do you want users? Uh, you have to exit the current exam in order to do that. Cancel. Dual, how do you want the dual screen to go? And this is um, this is about buffering, and you want to be able to scroll through the Cine on both uh, when you're in the dual display down here. Uh, in general, single uh, is all you need. Mode, uh, how do you want the images to show? As you Like in uh, CW Doppler, um, you, you saw that it was a very tiny image at the top for the sector probe and a much larger spectral, but you can have it show small over large, large over small, side by side, full screen. Um, optimum, cur optimum cursor angle, how do you want that to show up? Uh, you want the trace to scroll so it's always in the middle. HPRF enabled, that's high pulsed repetition frequency um, for when you're doing something where you're going to have um, high velocities uh, to measure. Preset menu, you're going to click here and this is going to show you what shows up when you click on the preset menu. So when we hit this preset menu up here uh, on this S51 transducer, I only want the cardiac ones up there. I don't want uh, this acute, the abdominal. Um, so, you know, if I go to this L12-3, uh, you know, I've got MSK. I'm not doing abdominal there, but you can get rid of all these others if you don't want that menu to look too cluttered. And that's where you would change that. Then you can um, auto select the preset, move them up or down on there. So here we've got this carotid, this auto select. I can click on that and say whenever I connect this L12-3 I want carotid to be the auto selected preset or if I want to get vascular access but in general I want that carotid on there and it'll tell you down here what that is and it's saying always use it that's fine. Annotation, uh, this is where you'd set up your custom annotations. I'll just go back to vascular since that's where we were. You can add them and move them on list one, list two, list three. There was that down there. Uh, along the bottom when you clicked annotation, there are multiple lists you could choose from. And you know, if, if you note, if you click on these, nothing happens. So you need to go choose this move labels over here. And here is where you can take them, move up, down, add text, uh, move to list one, move to list two. And that will put that on there. So I want to put that back move to unassigned list and it pops it back over there and gets rid of it from this. So this is where you're going to do that. You can also say, I want to move this up to the top. So I'm moving ICA up and down. I can also add my own custom text and just type it in there. And then I would click OK and save. I'll delete that since I don't need it. Uh, actually, I'll hit cancel. But also what you, you can select right up here, we have 2D, ICE, vascular, small parts, pediatric. But even within vascular, I have multiple choices of all these different things here where I'm going to have different text boxes for each one. So, uh, if, you know, make sure that you are looking at this carotid part or wherever it is that you want to make a change. But tremendous amount of customizations you can do here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel since I don't want any of those changes saved. Tools and results. You can set up your measurements and how they appear, uh, what you do for the trace, circumference, two-point area, uh, etc. These are all pretty self-explanatory if you want to make those changes. Uh, circumference measure, do you want to use ellipse or manual trace? Default to auto Doppler trace, that was that high Q where it had that automatic Doppler and mode reference line and a lot of these things you can go through on your own as to what appears uh, when you hit that measurement setup. Your report, system templates, what do you want to appear on the report? I won't go too much depth with that. Measure and calcs, here's where you're going to uh, create your own custom calcs. And we saw this earlier in the measurements and calculations as to what shows up when you hit that calc button. And like I showed this carotid, uh, when I was in a 2D image and I hit calc, nothing appeared. That's because up here I have all 2D, M mode, and Doppler. So when I hit the calc button, what's going to appear? If I'm in just a flat 2D, no measurements are going to appear there. But in Doppler, when I hit calc, these will show up. And I can add and remove 
If I, you know, like left arrow, right arrow, if I want to get rid of one, I'm going to click this right arrow here. But if I want to add one, I'm going to highlight it and click the left arrow. I can also add all or remove all. And these are the measurements and these are the calcs that, that will appear. What calcs do you want to appear on the screen? I can highlight multiple ones and move them all over. And if I just want to go back to the default, I can click default and I'll get rid of any changes I made on there and all that. Measurements, same thing. How do you want them to appear in what order on screen? You can create your own, copy from a previous, or edit that current measurement. And again, I've selected carotid here, and I can do multiple ones. Calculations is the same idea. What calcs do you want to show up? And here's the sequence in which you want them to appear uh, when you hit that menu. And you can change these in multiple places. So go ahead and hit cancel. I'll just go ahead. Sorry. Acquisition. Okay, so when I acquire a loop here, uh, this is prospective or retrospective, and what prospective means when I hit this acquire button, it's going to save, you know, if I have it set for the next three seconds, it's going to save the next three seconds. If next two beats, it'll save the next two beats. If I choose retrospective, it's going to save, if I hit it in a live image, it's going to save the last three seconds, beats, whatever that I saw. So prospective is saying I want to acquire everything from here forward, or their retrospective is is saving the last couple. Now, when you're in Cine and you're saving it from that Cine review, obviously it can't save uh, the prospective. So the beep, I do recommend hitting beep after require complete, so that way you know it showed up. Except prior to store, kind of annoying, saying do you want to save this or not. Uh, display warning uh, if your patient lasts, you know, then you got your disk full strategy, uh, change the acquisition format. It's RGB right now for your cardiac 3D. Don't worry about that unless you're doing it. Another 3D, 4D, we won't hit that. Stress echo protocols, uh, load defaults, the view order, um, the loop type, default acquisition type, single quad. I won't get too much into this. Power management. Um, okay, so Portability mode when display lid is shut. So is it going to shut down, uh, like go to sleep for you and not stay on? You can turn that on or off. So if I close the lid right now, does it want to go to sleep or do I want it to keep it on? Battery level warnings, uh, really good idea to have. Uh, eight minutes is the default. You might consider something longer, uh, you know, like 10 or 12 in case you're in the middle of a study. You know you got to whip through that pretty quick. Removable media. Uh, this is, you know, CD, DVD, whatever you've got plugged in. If you've got to use uh, USB stuck in there, you can erase what's on there in case you just want to make sure it's blank. Service, key logging, system service, we're not going to get into any of this. Options, uh, this is going to show you what's active on your system. So you can install, remove, etc. I don't know why you'd want to remove an option, but all these are the installed parts and not installed options on the system. So like, for example, I have Live 3D and Live X-Plane on this system. Peripherals, where you're going to set up your, oops, I cancel there. Peripherals, printers, etc. You're going to configure your printer here and it'll give you uh, your paper size and any settings that you want to do on there. Cancel. And this acquire uh, if you want to change that acquire button to something else. Foot switch, uh, install printer drivers if you don't have a Sony UP D897 or this generic printer uh, that would be connected analog, that would be there. 3D, 4D, we're not going to, It's you know, if you're doing that, you can just take a look here. And we also took a look at protocols and load protocol. These are various protocols uh, to help you run through the measurements, how you want them to go, um, in your exam, what ways it so it makes it quicker and a little more efficient for you to go through an exam. I don't want to apply any changes, and now I'm back to imaging. And next, we'll get into the DICOM setup.